This video is about the modeling of unreinforced masonry in a building framed structure and how to model these in an STAT Pro. In the seismic analysis, this is very important. So what we will be covering in this, the buildings with unreinforced masonry which are damaged due to seismic events. So what is included and what is left? So we will be covering the unreinforced masonry but some note about what the confined masonry construction is about before moving to the original topic. I will just give a brief overview. Confined masonry consists of masonry walls either clay bricks or block units and vertical members are tie columns. Horizontal members are called tie beams. So what are the effects and how we will compare differentiate on the site because by looking they look same only the method of construction and the sequence is different in confined masonry first the masonry walls are created then tie columns and lastly the beams and in seismic zone 3 and 4 up to 3 or 4 is storied and seismic zone 5 only up to 2 is storied the confined masonry can be made but for higher story, other type of building structures can be made. That is where our unreinforced masonry are constructed for buildings with high rise. Then strong fill infills provide the lateral resistance. And the behavior, they also work for the slenderness effects. And their thickness also. And for the same height, the tall wall will fail or have a tendency to overturn. Length of wall, which tends to buckle locally. So cross walls are provided so that the long wall becomes short. So what the infill walls interfere with the moment resistance frame. So infill walls behave like trusses. They provide load path and transfer loads. An exclusion of influence from analysis called many partial height making the adjoining column short which attract more forces. They become the stiff and they cause the likely failure. For steel reinforcement, for example, that is the model of elasticity. Clay and masonry, this is the formula given in a code which is based on the chord modulus of elasticity. So here it is the IS1905, the code and commentary. It goes to CVR Murthy for that publication. These are the effective height which H is given from foundation top to the center line or the floor RCC4 and on the right is timber floor so what the walls are these are given in the codes openings in walls whenever there is an opening in wall So the code has specified what height should be taken. We will be considering when the truss member the openings are small sides. So walls have full restraint. The effective height is given. That depends upon the full height plus the the portion that is 25% of the opening height and 75% of the full height. And walls having full restraint and the column
So this is this type of shear failures in MSNB cross walls under lateral loading. So when the motor is strong and weak units, that is the upper, the diagonal type of crack, the horizontal type of crack for sliding and steer step cracks when the motor is weak and strong units. So like that the shear failure and on the bottom right corner when lateral force act, the excessive compressive stress at toe causes the tension splitting and crushing of masonry. So this type of in plane shear have effect on the brick wall that is the figure A. In figure B the walls will deflect like a bending. So resistance in the lateral loads is greater in case of wall A. This will act like a shear wall in plane loads. Usually 1 to 20 storey normal reinforced concrete buildings have a time period from 0.05 to 2 seconds and steel buildings too. So what we take in the bottom figure, one can see one, was, one will take analysis in the yellow in the designing part in the shown in red but while in construction will be something like with the infill masonries on the first and second floor. So this does not truly represent the analytics and design. And this Pauline and Pesley, the renowned structural engineers who have written many books, renowned world figures. They have provided the effective stiffness during the literal load. The stiffness of members of beams range to 0.4 and for columns 0.8. This is taken in the code also and the 35% of the gross stiffness is taken. And this is the effect of all the low rise building A for some 6 storeys B for 10 to 12 storeys F. This is the difference between the cracked stiffness and gross stiffness. And that depends on the natural period. Effect of de degree of fixidity at member ends at supports also plays a high role. For example, we take fix base for a small up to two to four story structures. But when the flexible foundation soil is there, then the column bay may act like a hinge or partial hinge. So effect of fixidity governs that the founding criteria as per site or structure. So that can be incorporated in our models. So this is the figure A and B when the supports are hinged and right the supports are fixed. Fixed column base, hinged column base. These are the normalized mode shape with respect to building height. Effect of fixidity at member ends. This introduces flexible type of behavior. So I am just giving an overview. After this, we will cover how to model the truss type of members in Stat Pro. To represent the unreinforced masonry. So these are the sketches. With unreinforced masonry in fill walls. The bare frame in figure A, where the predominant frame action is there. In fill frame, predominant truss action. And in the right C is the hybrid frame where there is a mixed frame action. The frame and infills both are acting. And of course, there is no unreinforced masonry at the ground story. So, this type of forces will be resisted by diagonal direction in unfilled masonry. Infills. 
This is an some photographs of open ground story building in seismic area that collapsed during the 2001 Bhuj earthquake in India. Ground story, the soft story collapsed. These are photos are also taken from that the seismic codes which are credits are given in the end of this session. So when the shaking is along direction of masonry wall which results in diagonal cracking in plane walls shaking action in plane action in the direction direction when the force come in from left to right the truss action is there second is the out of plane bending which we have shown earlier these photos are taken from the some concepts in earthquake building of earthquake behavior of buildings by Dr. C. V. R. Murthy et al., which is published by Gujarat State Disaster Management Authority in association with IITK. Dr. C. V. R. Murthy et al., all of the authors, Dr. Stupan Goswami, Dr. A. R. Vijay Narayan, and Dr. Vipul B. Mehta. This is a concept of confined masonry construction. The one figure, the partial height of masonry is constructed. Only reinforcement in the column is placed, but concreting is not done. So, this is the sequence of which is the difference between the confined masonry and the unreinforced or reinforced type of masonry infills. Second is the partial infill. Then third step, get the same height concreting is then again the partial construction of masonry. Then the final height of columns and lastly the beams are constructed. So the load will be taken by the load bearing balls. That is the concept. This is the grade goes to. So how we will model the unreinforced masonry equivalent diagonal strut model here EC is the young modulus of infill the general value of what should be the modulus of elasticity which is given by Pauli and Chrisley 1994 that is the 0.25 times of the width is when the diagonal length is dm then the width of strut can be 0.25 failure stress of a masonry prism with the correction ratio of prism 2 to 5. Masonry brick prism failure stress usually varies from 1.75 to 10. Elastic modulus which is the chord between 0 0.05 failure stress fm to 0 0.33. So we will take the elastic metal properties of infill masonry. Failure stress and model velocity EM is given by 550 times the failure stress. And this is the formula given in code. When the compressive strength of brick and mortar is given, that can also be calculated by this formula, which is the field test is not there. These are the parameters which we will be using in our modeling. We will be needing this modulus of elasticity shear modulus density so brick unit usually in India for the clay bricks this compressive strength varies from 7 to 15 15 is of course too high which depends on much better uh, with having some cement type material cement issues otherwise it may be all low to 5 also so definition of a regular building, it's the IS code 1893 part 1 2016. So this is the below the soft story check. This is the return where the infill masonry exceed 20% of the plant. Then this should be considered explicitly in the structure analysis. So as per this code, 
whenever the Intel walls are there, they must be modeled. That is now a cloud requirement. The estimation of the in-plane stiffness shall be based on provision, provisions as per the code, which were the formulas which we have indicated. And this is the without when the wall does not have any opening, then width of the equinoid diagonal strut shall be taken as this is the formula given alpha h. I will just open the better image. So this is the basic guideline 0.25, which is too high as per code sometimes this comes to much lesser than that also 0.25 but that was a figure I have just given for indication although there are many parameters and much more detailed uh, values are given in that poly and Priestley I have just picked a one line just to give a comparison so this is a type of this is the length the width is the theta is the angle the equivalent diagonal strut of an unreinforced masonry so how like that is model so we will be now coming to our sample model so we will be taking a 3d frame model say example three story height it will be in the x direction four base five meter each so we will just modeling it just to give an idea and three bay four meter each in z direction height we will be taking 4.2 and 3.2 meter beam size just then assuming 0.3 by 0.4 meter column size 0.35 by 0.35 square material we will be taking concrete so I have just calculated in a simple spreadsheet the panel direction the failure stress I have taken from an example assuming of a basin and model of velocity em the floor height we will have to put span length the beam depth clear height of wall this gives the theta angle frame concrete grade and modulus of elasticity of a frame concrete for example m25 you will be taking so these are the single figures by which we will be getting the width of the diagonal strut and that depends upon the floor height and span because the theta angle will be changing and the code specified a formula for which these all parameters will be required and when the direction changes in the x and z that is in the horizontal plane we consider usually xz plane instead so i have taken same things the formula clear height of infill wall after deducting the beam depth thickness of the brick wall I have taken 250 it is almost 10 inches and here comes the moment of inertia of adjoining column that is the BD cube by 12 then alpha H as per code and then the length of diagonal strut I have just given you the formula. Then width of the equivalent diagonal strip comes from the formula. Here it comes 0.59 in the x direction. Similarly in the z direction that comes slightly lower. For example a length of almost 5 meter. When we take 0.25 d as per polyamplicity that comes to 1 meter. But there it comes almost uh, 55 to 60 percent of that figure. Now I have created a new model. This is a blank model. Nothing is there. I will just make for the use of structural design a bay frame. The size the same which we have taken in the x direction. Here the length is the total size of the bay frame. Units I have taken kilo newton meter. Otherwise the fit will be the sizes 
I have to change again from the configuring after closing the file then only the units will come into meter so here we will put all the figures of total length and number of base in x and z direction and the height so that was 5 meter each 5 base height we will create 2 base later we will change the height of second story 2 base 4.2 meter each and 3 base so 5 base in x direction 3 base in z direction and 2 base of equal so we'll just merge this wizard dimensions as prototype into the stat pro analytical modeling the geometry is being transferred we will just display the heights the 4 meter in z direction 3 base 4 into 3 12 meter 5 into 5 25 meter that was the figure which we have taken now we will change this roof height selecting beam tools three point two meter height is the height of upper story. So we will get the size of our building with four point two meter for right ground floor below is the foundation level and then there are two higher floors of 3.2 meter height we can modify and edit the geometries now I will provide some supports first I have to define the support definition I will create one support definition select that support definition in the data window on right and then select the nodes and assign now I will check by applying 3 degrees so this is just a modeling part I am just creating edges right from the beginning to end of modeling the geometry members and then applying these are the inbuilt sizes uh, Properties of the materials and material concrete. This is the standard material file which has material metric and imperial units in the INM file which installs in this stack so I will create now the property for my concrete members that was we we'll discuss the square concrete section 0.35 by 0.35 for column size and b 0.3 by 0.4 millimeter depth. So the yd is the depth, which is put it first, and zd is the beam width 0.3 meter. So we have created two properties. The concrete strength can be modified here. This was ultimate strength for CU. 27 something and 27 27 and 3 and Newton per nm square that comes to around 27,000 something plus I'll change to 25,000 but I have not changed this is the final file so that I can change so once a new file is created I get all the properties once and for all for which I need to modify the names and this type and everything has to be the numbering has to be changed. So this nine type of set and every member name must be name nine, type nine, eighteen nine, poison nine, and then 
So this is the location where the default INI file is saved. Once the file is saved, all the new materials for concrete grid have come. We can create a new isotropic material and modify the properties also. But this will remain to this input file command file only. So the isotropic concrete was default. We created another isotropic M20 and another third one for M25. So the members properties have been assigned, the material has been assigned, M25 selected all and looking to the 3D view. Thus, the shapes have been appropriately configured. Now, we will create the material that is the un URM for unreinforced masonry with properties as per our masonry. That is the model of elasticity. Young's modulus. Three more zeros units in kilonewton per meter square that is poison ratio we will take the same 0.17 here we will take a very low density just we do not want to include the load twice we will add load on the beams of the walls separately but for this strut member of this space and size Shear modulus, that is the G, that is taken by the formula, that is E upon 2, 1 plus nu, the Poisson ratio. So, we will assign. Thus, a new material has been defined, URM, with our Young's modulus, Poisson ratio, density, and we will assign the strength FCU also. That is the shear modulus that I have mentioned, G modulus velocity. E upon 2 bracket 1 plus nu, the Poisson ratio. This is under MPA, that is Newton per mm square, converted into kilonewton per meter square, that is multiplied by 1000. It was 1269, 126. So that's I was mentioning because we will take the dead load separately. Thus, the strut number, its properties, and size is correctly assigned, and we will release the end members as hinged so that only the tension or compression will be taken by the strut members. So the 0.59 was the depth as per our code formula and 0.25 that is the thickness of the masonry material has been assigned. Now I will model 
the trust members in one direction because I will consider in this case at present force in one direction all the diagonal members are in the positive z direction and this is even the ground floor then I can assign the properties if there is an open story then this members have to be removed that depends on what type of structure we are planning I will just assign the materials first then translate translation and repeat I will copy to other base of this building One, two, three, four, five. So five number of steps. Default spacing was five. Okay. So all the diagonal strut members of our undismount masonry are assigned in the x direction. Now in the wall facings in x direction. This will be made a struct and I will translate in Z direction. I was just checked. That these are the so I have to do it model correctly otherwise another node might be created if the cursor selection is moved slightly off bit on the member so this members as I have selected but they have taken the wrong nodes yet so I have to select only the fray at extreme end so these were wrong I will have to delete them and I will re redo it by selecting only some frame so these were the incorrect and now I am it at the correct places only one side frame I have taken and I will draw or make these diagonal members now I will check that they are applied at the appropriate place so modeling is also extremely important assign the properties selecting first in the right data window then selecting the members thereafter applying to the selected pages so this is the reference number 3 that is R3 type of material now again under geometry I will check now the beams are at correct place translate repeat in z direction the three ways are there the four meter spacing and now for the first floor or say ground floor the members have been modeled Now for upper floors, I will do the same thing. I will just rotate up 
Now again, I will add the beans. So there are only five members in diagonal direction. So I will just use my add beam command from the geometry tab, the beam icons, and just model the members by just clicking. If the members are more, I can use the copy paste or say translate type of commands. But I, this is a simple model having very less members, small members number of members are not that high I will just remove the highlight cursor so that when I select translation and repeat it does not get deselected I will repeat in Z direction for the second or third floor. Now checking from the view, the 3D view, all members have been drawn, whole structure. Now I will draw on the other plane, other face of wall, select them, all the correct the selected objects so that my diagonal strut members are joined at correct nodes. If all nodes are selected then they usually tend to select from first to last node which used to be on different planes I will assign them my properties Rechecking all the shapes. Now I will add the specification for release, partial moment release. I can enter 0 or 1 for full moment release, but I will take a 0.99 figure. I will select MPY that is the moment release in Y direction and Z direction of the member. Point 0.99 just to avoid some local instabilities due to the stiffness matrix sometimes that gives some problems. Same for the end location. I am just defined the member specification. Now under properties, I have selected all the members with respect to properties. Selecting the specification and assigning them. Start again, the end two times I have specified thus the blue circle set end of the members and blank at the start of members are indicating my start and 
memory list. I will look into the command file, the command input file and check my material. If I want to change, I can change some properties from here also. This is a very effective tool for editing from the input file. So convenient, so clear. So this is the memory release properties which I added. Now comes the loads. So we will take the self weight of the columns, self weight of the beam, self weight of slab as floor load, floor finish as floor load and live load which will be as a floor load. So this the floor load is a type of load in Stat Pro. And wall load I will take as an UDL. So loading, this is the blank file, no definitions are there, no load case are there. So I will just add some reference load cases. Adding a load case. For dynamic analysis, I want to add the mass load. I will name the same as mass. Self weight factor as one. In the reference load cases for seismic type, we usually avoid the sign conventions always take positive so that they does not cancels so I have a slide mass as a reference load case and load item in x direction I will have to apply one factor in x direction again in y direction and z direction so that the mass excites in each direction not even in the gravity y direction but in horizontal both directions in plane so all mass inertia mass force should act in horizontal direction that's why the self weight in y x and z are taken so every load has to be applied but to act the mass in each direction we will apply it in all the three directions now the flow load I am assuming the slab thickness of concrete 0.15, density is 25, then the floor load will be 0.15 into 25, that is 3.75. Floor finish load directly is 1 kN, live load I have taken 4 kN, and as per code, when the load is more than 3, then 50% of the live load has to be taken, that is the 2 kN per meter square. And the effective height, we know it, that is from floor height less the beam. That gives the gross height of masonry wall so that I can take the correct height for masonry wall thus the load will be calculated of the dead load of walls thickness 0.25 3.2 minus 0.4 2.8 is the height of wall so wall load of first floor will be different than the higher floors as their height is different Now I will apply the pressure flow load in the mass. This is the 3.75, the self weight of floor in each direction. From 4 meter height to 15 meter, that is the slab is on these levels only. So load has to be applied or dot that load only. Otherwise, it may apply to the foundation also. So I have taken my minimum 4. So in GH direction, same in GY direction, same in GZ direction. So I will apply the self weight 3 times. So this is the definition. And the floor lead has been assigned, but the self weight is only defined, but these are not assigned. So I will assign it to the whole mass assigned to view that will make 
assigned to view self weight is as written as applied as all so once all is selected every time we can increase add some more elements the self weight will automatically be applied to that also so this is the power of some commands which one can check from the input file too now the self weight the slab weight is taken now the floor finish load of 1 kN per meter square that is also applied at each slab at floor levels in three directions so like the finish load has been applied now this is the live load which is 4 kN per meter square but the effect as per code we have to take on the 50% for the mass computation and dynamic analysis and seismic weight we will have to take on as per 50% of the live load and now lastly we will take the dead load of our infill walls that will be applied as member loads to all our beams but the value is different so I may take 18.5 kN per meter so I will apply it in global X, global Y and global Z direction. So this is the masonry wall with 4.2 meter height or 3.2 meter height. This is for 2.8 meter height GX, GY, GZ. So I have just defined it while assigning I will be taken care of at which floor beams the walls are there so once I select it this is the load is shown all loads are shown in green but with selected load is shown in blue so I know the heights I will select the levels so this floor have infill masonry of larger height 4.2 so I will select this load case members have been selected assigned to selected beams and assign all the three times now this is the floor beams at first floor and second floor level the roof there will be no walls or maybe some parapet but I have ignored that I will take on the floor where the walls are there so these are the 3.2 meter height I have not considered any opening this is a building with slightly moderate response and with every beam there will be a masonry wall and they too of same thickness although they may be of lesser thickness depending upon the structure like it. but for the our sample project I have taken it a uniformity so now my reference load type mass has been defined under that the load items of self weight floor load and the dead and live loads have been taken so for seismic type of load this reference load will be too much useful I will not have to define them again So I will just put a comment over it so that anyone can see the input file and for what slab thicknesses and loads 
I have taken I will just write it there so my command input file is self-explanatory Floor finish load, one kilonewton per meter square. I have nothing to add more note over here. This is the live load. Four kilonewton per square meter, which is as per IS code, one eight nine three. Fifty percent of the live load is considered in mass computation. Because seismic load or equivalent load resistant frame system or response spectrum cases. So, density of brick masonry I have taken 19.5 kilonewton per square meter. I just copied the density of beam, depth of beam, the effective length for both the cases. I just copied and pasted it and like that it's all. My input file is now ready. As far as my mass loads are concerned. Now I will have to apply the floor diaphragm specification so that the little forces are attracted by my diaphragms that is the slabs. I have not modeled them separately. We have taken the loads directly as a tributary for the self load or slabs, the ball loads, but the slab we will use a master slave specification or a direct floor diaphragm at each height. It will calculate the master load by knowing at each level that is the 11.6 meter height from the base node. It will calculate all the nodes and calculate the master node and all assigned as the slave nodes. So the horizontal little forces are attracted by this diaphragm slave action and force will be transmitted laterally. So I have four diaphragms are there at 4.2 meter height, 8.2 meter height, 11.6 meter level and 14.8. This is the height from the base. And I can make some members inactive that is when we will apply the loads so I will just define it here but we will not be using the more elaborate load combinations but the inactive members is a useful tool which must be used in this type of structures when the load is acting in one direction the other direction strut members will become inactive for that we will have to define them and incorporate in different type of combinations so I will just defining here that these members will be inactive sometimes when the load in one direction and the load in, in so these member will be inactive members when the force these are in x direction so when the force in z direction this will become inactive the in plane action we do not want to consider of them then this can be inactive but so there will be two forces in x direction two forces in z direction so we will have to define the four times the inactive sets
so I have defined in the all the diagonal strut in first and third case and second and fourth we will select in the struts spanning in Z direction so we will define them inactive two times so this is the definition part but apart from that it will be the engineer's choice that he will have to decide that what loads and what combinations he has to apply and they should be applied appropriately and correctly so that the structure behaves as per the required criteria so seismic parameter I am taking example zone 5 in Indian cases response reduction factor 5 importance factor 1 I will take medium size and that is the ST5 is the STAD parameter and this is the formula the time period is given with respect to height so with respect to our mass the STAD will calculate the time period and the code also specified but the minimum time period has to be taken so I will define now the seismic definitions which is the primary consideration for this session so I will take the IES code 1893-2016 I can put the values here also or I can generate as per the zone factor for zone 5 I can take any city or directly the zones and since this is a beam columns that is a RC building with a special moment resistant frame type so I will select the second one default come was under Ford masonry with seismic bands that is not our case we are the building and medium soil I have generated the parameters and here I will take the reference road case and select them and add it so def definition is there for the seismic properties and load will be the reference load so in a just one click all the load have been taken in our seismic definitions now once the definitions have been done I will have to assign to this structure that will come through the only load case the definition part does not apply the loads load is applied to a structure only through the load case details only so definition may be in the reference load but they are only mentioned they are not applied so now we will be using the load case static load case that is the equivalent literal load resistance system as per code in x direction positive x and positive z I have just drawn only the positive side of struts that's why I have taken only the seismic pin plus x and plus z but this is the load case I have to define now for the response spectrum that is another type of seismic analysis details of various type of seismic load I will be covering separately in some other session it's about the equal load resistance system and response spectrum load case so I have defined again the two type of response spectrum so we will be doing we can do, apply the loads and do analysis in one model only the static and response spectrum by defining the mass as a reference load so here it's under seismic load first selecting and I will apply a load item to it the static seismic is the name of load and load item I will have to select 
from my seismic load so under seismic load x direction plus 1 seismic load z direction load case we defined load item the seismic is there response spectra was for the load number 3 and 4 for 1 and 2 under seismic load from the load definitions on the left so I will apply in the plus direction and response spectrum I will add under load items here the response spectra is there and once I open the response spectra I can select my code the combination method everything is there only two things I have to put it that is the spectrum type the direction in X and Z that we will have to complete as per the formula given in code this is empty once I select the subsoil this will just populate the figure the period acceleration as per our code so under response spectrum direction factor is a factor taken in stat pro which is a portion of AH that has to be multiplied by SA by G so that is the AH as per IS code SA by G multiplied by Z by 2 into I by R so Z is the for zone 5.36 divided by 2 multiplied by importance factor 1 divided by 5 that comes to 0 0.036 so I will have to put this as a response spectrum case SA by G the part of SA by G again I will just check mark once in the response spectrum in x direction 0 0.036 and custom we will take medium size and this parameters will be taken populate as per our code so this is an itching graph I will take the default figures I have not taken other parameters these are the advanced features which we will consider in some other session again for the response spectrum z direction I will take my code this time I will take the same soil and the spectrum type I will for the z direction that is the 0 0.036 as we have to calculate it and type in here so this is the complete seismic equivalent loads are applied and response spectrum has been applied with modeling of unreinforced masonry Now I will use the analysis print command and I will add a P delta analysis. I have taken a non-linear analysis but only the first load case will be performed. Once we take the two analysis type only the upper one will be that's what the warning came so mass model these are no error is there only seven messages and seven warning is there seismic mate has been to be performed with regular that is the standard warning if the shape is regular or not and if our base shear is less than the code then the code calculated formula base shear will be used so that is another warning for that and the base dimension is calculated at lowest support if something is changed for the base dimension so that factor height which we have taken as 4.2 or 8 or 11 meter something was there that depends upon the lowest load level so that was another warning so one must know 
these type of warnings otherwise the results will not be accurate so these are the warnings which are very informative and explanatory itself so we will be using the output window These are the base shear and time period, calculated frequencies of all the six mode shapes. Standard is six mode shape. I have not changed it, so only six modes are given. And we have got the period of minimum 0.35 second, and maximum is 1.33. For the first mode shape, it's 1.33. So our period is 1.33. This is the response load case number three with the modal weight. These are the peak storage shears for the base, which is at zero level, and 4.2, 8.4, 11.6, and 14.8 meters is the height. We get the acceleration. These are the modal base factors. These are the participation factors, which is almost 88% in first mode shape in x direction. The modal mass. These are the peak storage shear. Which we have got 627 kilonewton modal base actions mass participation factor again. So only first use as I have mentioned. So I can delete the second analysis. If I will run it, it may give much more error for the non-linear analysis. So two errors are there. That analysis must have been terminated. For that non-linear analysis, we have to do something else. That is a very detailed type of seismic analysis. That is not part of this session. So I have just shown how the errors are populated in the output file. So thanking you. That's all for this session.